This is Pop Crush Nights. My name is Kayla Thomas, and I am with actress, comedian, singer. Thank you, Rachel Crow. My girl, Rachel Hi. Crow. Thank you for calling me a comedian. Because <laughs> I think you're funny. I call myself one. You are But funny. everyone around me is like, <laughs> no. So me and Rachel actually met like last month at yes. Radio Row, and mm -hmm. I got to interview her, and literally we hit it off right then and there. Yeah. We were gonna hang out later. We tried to meet up. Didn't work. She it fell didn't. asleep on me. Yeah, it didn't work. Who out. does that? I know. I was really excited. I was, I was it was hurt. her birthday. She just turned it twenty one, mm -hmm. and I was gonna, you know, buy her, you know, take her out, you know, yeah. do the whole thing. And, and I then, texted her like eight thirty, and she was like, and I was "Girl, like, girl, sorry, I was done." <laughs> I was <laughs> so like, "Okay, we gotta do a redo." Yes. So you have you're, to come to LA. I, definitely, I definitely yes. will. So your latest song is called "Up All Nights." Congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Can you tell me the story behind the song? Yeah, um, we might have touched on this a little bit at Radio Row, but basically, um, I wasn't really dating this person. I just really liked him a lot, and we hung out all the time, and he really liked me, too. Um, and it was really cute and amazing, and we even went to New York, and he came with me to get a tattoo when I got one of my tattoos, and he was just, like, really special and a great person, and then sort of it fizzled out, Um and I wasn't necessarily bummed because I felt like maybe it was just what it was supposed to be. Um, maybe we weren't supposed to date. Maybe we were just supposed to like be in each other's lives for this time. So I sort of moved on from it. Um, and then about six months later, I was at a party. Um, and he walked in. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh. I was like, this is going to be terrible. So he walked in and it was fine. Like everything just sort of picked back up where it left like off. Normal, yeah. We, yeah, we went up. Um, to like the roof of the building mm -hmm. and we just like looked at the city it was very adorable and we just hung out and spent time again and, and talked until like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sort of went on our separate ways again and so the next day I was in the studio so I knew I had to write about it because right. I was like this is weird yeah. like I don't know what this <laughs> is but it makes me really happy yeah. so I wrote about it because um, I don't know he was just a really important part of my life um, in a really transitional period for me um, and so, yeah, I wrote it about him because he is a special person and he made me smile in a time where I was really sad. Do so. you think he knows the song is about you? Um, I think if he him? watches this interview, he'll be like, that's a lot of details that I was doing with right? you. Nope. So that may or may not, not be me. But I didn't tell him because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. I'm, you know? sure, I'm sure he'll find out. Also, I don't want him to be like, mm -hmm, so you wrote a song about me? Like, I don't want him to be like, <laughs> right, have that I'm power. like, don't, don't get excited. You know what I mean? Exactly. Don't get excited. So um, the music video came out like three weeks ago. Um, yeah. And it's sexy. You're in the <gasps> rain. I get like Rihanna umbrella vibes. I know. That was um, my inspiration. But I read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I read in an article that you said that when you first saw um, the first cut of the music video, mm -hmm. you didn't like it. Can you yeah. tell me why? Yeah. I was sad um, because I guess the whole day, like, I mean, you see in the video, like, my face is like stone. Like, I am feeling myself I'm fierce and I feel really good about it but when I saw it back I guess I saw um all of the angles of me that were flawed or the parts where my shirt like would ride up in a weird way or where I felt like my leg looked bigger um than it normally does and like little things and I had to catch myself because I got into this place of wanting to change myself so others would see it and think I'm perfect whereas my whole life I've been a confident person because I am not perfect. And so when I saw that and felt that, it made me feel bad. Like I almost felt like like dirty. I was like, why, why do I feel this way? Um, and so I wanted to open up about it because I feel like so many people, and I know every woman in this room, I'm sure men feel it too, but women maybe on a little bit different level because we are trying to be sexy and perfect and our contour needs to be perfect and our, our makeup needs to be smooth and we need to be shiny. And we're trying to get to this place of these Instagram models who are editing their bodies with Facetune or Photoshop and, like, going in with the, like, filter and making their eyes pop and, like, their teeth whiter. And we're trying to get there when it doesn't exist. Like, we're human. We're going to look weird sometimes. We're going to have days where we don't look our best. But if we can't deal with that and ourselves when we look like that, then what are we doing? Exactly. Like, how are we going to survive? Exactly. So... I like I caught myself and was like, no, 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 no. You love yourself. Yeah. You know who you are. You're fine. You right. look great. Mm -hmm. Like be happy with it. And so 
after I like did a few more edits of the video, I started really feeling that fire again of like, I love myself and I think I look great and I don't really care if people don't because I think I look great exactly. and, and I'm taking responsibility. Right, and I think girls need to see somebody like that yeah. who embraces their body, looks amazing, oh, but you. a natural body because we don't see that yeah. anymore you know, on social media. So it's good to see that you you know, are embracing your body yeah. and feeling confident about yourself you. despite this image on social media that we have to look like a Kardashian or something like that. Yeah, you know? and I think it's hard because I think everyone struggles. I mean, I'm sure that even the Kardashians have yeah. their days, which is pretty hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just we're trying to get to this completely, you know, impossible image of what we think we should look like because we are taught that a size four is fat or too big or because you eat a burger today, that makes you bad and you need to eat three salads next week. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. crazy stuff that we don't need to think about, like things that, that make us feel unhealthy when we're perfectly healthy and fine. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. I right. want people to be like, I want to eat that burger. Right. And I feel healthy because you know why? Because I am. Exactly. You know what I mean? I want them to feel confident yeah. in themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, you have a song like way back when called Mean Girls. Oh, no. And it's about high school bullying. So were we you go. bullied as a child? Yeah, I was. Right. I mean, I was. it was a little different for me probably than the normal bullying story because I'm adopted. So I was the only um, African-American person in my town. Gotcha. And so that was not easy because kids, you know, they don't do different very well. Or if they're not taught to do different, they don't do different very well. So when they saw me, they were just kind of like, hmm, somebody different? Let's pick on her. But it's fine. I mean, I'm good now. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm sure, like, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm sure as you're older, though, that bullying comes into a form of, like, you know, online hate. Yeah. So, how do you deal with, like, the negative comments on social media um, and all the trolling and stuff? Yeah. Um, I'm very fortunate. Um, I have not been one to get the level of hate that other people have or friends of mine have. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually, I have, like, the most wonderful fans in the world, and they all, like, are so kind to me. So I probably could count on two hands, like, how many times I've gotten hate. Um, but I think there are a few that always stick out at you, like, just mean things for no reason. And so recently I've been trying to put myself in the shoes of the person bullying online because, like, obviously there's something going on with them to, like, attack people. And so, yeah, recently a girl, um, like, said something really horrible to me about um, an experience that I had recently. Like, I, I was in a film and then I wasn't. And it was just sort of this, like, weird experience. And um, she tweeted me and was like, yeah, you, like, I see why they cut you out or whatever, like, this crazy stuff. And I was like, girl, I was like, thank you. That's all I said. I replied, I was like, yeah, thanks. And she was just like, mm -hmm, I don't know why you're getting butt hurt and, like, kept coming at me. And so I realized, like, if I keep answering this person, that's what they want. Exactly. So I just tried to ignore it. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, like, you're not going to bring me down. Exactly. Like, obviously something's going on with you. And, like... I'm sorry if you're, you know, <laughs> no, I, having yeah, a hard I agree day. Because, um, I, I mean, I got something crazy. like last week. Yeah. Somebody came at me on uh, Twitter about uh, how I am on the radio. And my first reaction was to be like, well, it's my radio, yeah. you, know, you know? But I had to realize, like, everyone is entitled to their own opinions. And it's my job to react in a mature way. You yeah. Know? I think so. so. I think being the bigger person is the best way. I mean, it's way easier said than done. Like you yeah. said, like I replied. I was like, mm, thank you. I was <laughs> like, you replied in like a mature way. Yeah, you know I mean? but like, you get so mad. You yeah. want to just like go off, but yeah. then you realize like, it's not nah, worth it. it's I'm not. not. You know why? Because we're better than that. Exactly. We're we're above that. Like exactly. we're trying to be better than that and mm -hmm. be kinder as people. And mm -hmm. I think that's the main line here. Like we're all trying to to like I said like like live in this social media age where we have to be perfect look perfect act perfect talk perfect like do everything right and these people are attacking you for you just trying to live and I think the baseline of that is like be kind to your neighbors yes. be nice to everyone online don't hate like just be cool just like be, cool. be chill like <laughs> Like, seriously, not that We video. live in a fun <laughs> time, people. Exactly. Like, everybody's having fun. So, okay, so let's switch gears. So you do it all. You are juggling between best, best of both worlds with acting and singing. Yes. What's your first love? Singing. Singing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah, you started on a X Factor when you were, like, 13 years old. Like, 13? How was yeah. that? It was hard. Yeah. You know, I was a kid. I mean, I'm still kind of a kid. <laughs> let's be real. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I was a kid, and I think that um, at that age, it's really hard to differentiate reality mm -hmm. from 
not reality. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? Yes. So I think I was on this show and it, and everybody thinks they know you because they see you for two minutes on a screen. But like, honestly, you don't know the half of what goes on on those shows. And so one, it was like the greatest experience because I wouldn't be sitting here with you without it. Um, but at the same time, it was a hard it was like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Because it was um, it was really taxing on me. I was, I was yeah. you know, I was a baby. But overall, it opens a lot of doors for you. Yes. You're on Nickelodeon, I Disney was. Channel, mm -hmm. my favorite big time rush, who, oh who I think goodness. need to make a comeback now that the Jonas Brothers are back. I know. I've said that. But um, <laughs> Do you hear that, boys? <laughs> Seriously. I'm going to text them and be like, listen. Please do. I'm going to be your manager now. I need that to happen. <laughs> so um, but as you're older, you're you know growing up, you're literally maturing before our eyes. Yeah. And we've seen you since you were 13, now 21. I'm but old. like as you are getting older and you're doing like these sexy videos <laughs> and you know, you're know you're writing about songs that you're experiencing life. Do you find it hard for your fans to, or get your fans to see you as a woman rather than that little girl in Big Time Rush? That's a really good question. Um, yeah, you know, for the longest time it was it was hard, um, but because my fans have sort of grown up with me, because we kind of started at the same age, I think they're maturing as I am, so they're getting to watch me do it while they're doing it, and so I feel like it's actually been pretty easy recently, um, especially because I'm 21 now. The hardest thing isn't necessarily with my fans, it's more with like people in the industry, like mm -hmm. taking me seriously as an adult person. A lot comes with that. I think it's easy to succumb to the pressure of um, being this like sex symbol, like clothes off at all the time, like girl, and like if that's your thing, totally good for you. Like I want you to do that because I support my ladies, you know, but I'm doing it in my way, yeah. which is like, like, I don't know, for me, I don't know if it's necessarily been baby steps because I am growing and am doing it the way I want. But, like, you know, this video was definitely, like, one of the sexier, like, things that I've done. And I think it's cool to be sexy and empowered as a woman. Um, and I want my fans to know that. I want the girls that are watching me to be like, you can talk about this stuff. You can be sexy and have sex appeal but be yourself and not feel pressure to do it in a fast way or a way that you're not comfortable. Um, and so that's what I've tried to do. And it's always a struggle you know it's always a struggle I think there are always people that are wanting you to to do it quicker than you want or um not at all so you know it, it's it's a balance but I think that I don't know I feel like I'm doing it right you know I feel good I'm happy with the way I'm doing it um and the way I feel more comfortable to speak about it and stuff. Yeah. So I think And what I'll I think is cool keep. also is like, you know, when you're acting, you're playing somebody else. Yeah, but yeah. when in your music videos, you get to be get you. To be me. Your yeah. songs, you get to be you. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that's like the most important part. Yeah. Um, when it comes to releasing music, um, do you, the fear of rejection, like you have a song that's so close to your heart, but do you ever mm -hmm. feel like, oh gosh, I don't know if no one likes it. Like, how do you handle the fear of rejection when it comes to yeah, that? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I feel like, honestly, there's a lot more rejection in the acting industry for me than in the singing industry because it's such a visual world versus, like, yes, music is a visual world, but, like, you know, your art's going to speak for itself ultimately. Um, and obviously you have to be able to back that up with who you are, but I feel like when I make my songs, I'm sort of just, like, making them for me. I, I love them and I I um I use them sometimes as a form of therapy because I'm writing about stuff that's going on in my life, um, good or bad. And so I think when I finish one of those songs with like my, my best friend is my songwriting partner. I think I mentioned that. Um mm -hmm. but she and I just like work really well together and um when I'm in these studios with these producers, I'm really focusing on what I wanna say. Um and I think that's new because People were always trying to tell me what to do when I was younger, and as I've gotten older, I've gotten stronger, and I've been like, no, like <laughs> this is my time. I'm gonna do what I want. And so um, I've been making music that sounds good to me and my brain and that I love, and people are loving that. And I think that they can feel that it's genuine and it's that that I want it. You know what I mean? I want it, so they want it because they they love me. And I'm very lucky to say that, like to have so many people feel like they love me and want to support me. And so because they do, I feel like I don't get scared anymore. I'm just kind of like, this is my music, Good you know? You. I'm Good like, you. this is what I offer. Yeah, and if you don't like it, it's fine because I have eight more. And in this industry, <laughs> I feel like you have to have that attitude to succeed. Yeah. So uh, to wrap it up, like what's next for you? EP? EP. I would love to have an EP out this year. Um, this I think year, that's okay. definitely the goal. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about really, really soon, but I really want to get back in the studio for just a little bit mm -hmm. um, and like, 
you know, perfect some things because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. I'm like, I want this to sound <laughs> great. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to put an EP out. And then, actually, um, Wednesday is ABC, my show, Schooled. Yes. So check you guys that out. watch that. I love that show. Oh, thank I've you. I've been watch- binge watching it. Oh, yeah. Yes, girl. Oh, you know I got to support my girl. We got a little pet name. What, what's it? We Kate. do. Uh, Kate. Kachel. Kachel. It's super weird, but, yeah, but hey, it works. we're weird, we're so it's weird. fine. It does. Thank you so much for coming thank to talk you. with me. It's good to see you again. Yeah, we need to have, like, a makeup hangout. Yeah, like a since girls I bailed night. on you last time, yeah. mm. you know? So mm-hmm. we'll do it. This is Rachel Curry, one Pop Crush Nights. <laughs>